So let's talk about my AR setup here, both the platform and also what I'm shooting with. I just have a basic, uh, that's like a Caldwell front rest and I'm not a Birchwood rear, uh, rear rest. It, th those aren't important. Important thing is it's a, I'm shooting it from a bench rest position, front and rear rest, and I'm using my Frankenstein AR here. Why do I say Frankenstein? Well, the lower here is a uh, new frontier, which is, it's an entry level product. It's very affordable. It's largely plastic. Uh, there's really nothing special about it. The upper, though, is it's also entry level, but it is considered a competition kind of series thing. Let me explain. So the actual brand is AR Stoner. AR Stoner is Midway USA's like retail brand for AR products, but they're just a retailer. They just resell parts. So who actually made it? Well, if you do your research, you look online. And I don't think they offer this anymore. Well, AR Stoner, I mean, doesn't offer it anymore. I think it's been discontinued. But Bear Creek Arsenal is the one who made it. And uh, let's actually oh, flip it over so we can take a look at what's stamped for specs. Yeah, chambered in 223 Wild, 1 and 8 Twist, keep focused. And then it has the 5 Groove, or the, you know, instead of 4 Groove Rifling, it has the 5 Groove Rifling. So they consider that match grade or match quality. They say that the five groove is better and more set for competitions. Uh, it makes it easier to clean, but I don't think it really affects accuracy. But let's talk about the scope. This is a Bushnell scope, Bushnell Nitro, which is kind of, uh, I don't want to say their top shelf commercial line, but I'm going to go ahead and say that. This is a uh, 5 to 20 power scope with a 44 millimeter objective lens, it's pretty good for what it does. And it's overkill for our application here, which is shooting at uh, 100 yards. Uh, however, um, this is the setup I did for my recent tests with Stayball 6.5, where I shot not only half inch groups, but one third inch groups. So this, this is an entry level AR system. Scope is definitely a little bit overkill for it, but still with an AR platform, entry level, half inch and one third inch groups. Today, I hope that we can replicate that. However, we're not using Stable 6.5. We're using Shooter's World Match Power uh, Powder, I meant to say. Let's take a look, quick look at our notes. Let's see, uh, first, I'm doing my doing my testing, my back ass words load development, because more and more people seem to be getting into doing their testing their uh, seating depth first. That's what I'm doing here. With this is the maximum charge for 223 Remington. This is a intermediate charge for 556 NATO. And I think JRB, that is to say Johnny's Reloading Bench, used this for replicating, um, is it Mark 252 ammo? You know, the match stuff that the military uses for their, uh, their platforms. Anyway, um, we just measured those over a chronograph and I think my average ended up being a little bit over 2700. And the standard deviations and the extreme spread did not look pretty. So we have room for growth. Here's uh, some of the primers that I looked at. Focus. You can see here, well-rounded around, uh, not well-rounded, but it's slightly flattened, but it is rounded around the edges. There's no cratering. There's no smears. This is Norma brass. So we're looking pretty good. We got room for growth. Uh, lastly, one thing I'll note, brass catcher. I love it, especially in winter because I hate going out to this stuff, as shallow as this is, and hunting down my own brass. People are very dirty. You can count probably at least 10 cases there. Well, not all of it's 223, but there's a lot of 223 lying around that people aren't picking up, and I'm scared to pick it up since it's uh, exposed to the elements, we shall say. So quick overview of everything. I think we're done. Barrel's probably cooled off. So we're gonna see how these actually group, and then we're going to continue on with our uh, seating depth workup. And we'll see how things go. So this is kind of part one. Oh, oh, oops. Oh, I got a problem, guys. It, it still works. It still works. It still works. Let's see if it still works. Good thing I brought my magneto speed. Okay, it still works. So let's see if we can get it to focus and let's review. So this is 25.2 grains of Shooter's World Match 
powder. Uh, just kind of seeing how things do. So let's see, 25, I'm sorry, 27, 15, 27, 10, 26, 93, 27, 72, 27, 10, 27, 49. And that was the first shot. Okay. So then let's see. The average is 27, 24. Stream spread, pretty much 80, 30. So that's pretty much the same as off-the-shelf ammo. Uh, you know, let's see how the magneto speed does. And then we'll, yeah, let's just see how the magneto speed does. Let's talk about our seating depth test uh, in brief. And uh, this is not going to be on the subject of stable 6.5, but the big takeaway is going to be just because you found a seating depth that works for one powder doesn't mean it's going to work for others. Uh, I definitely learned that. And thankfully all my past targets are up so I can kind of prove that. So um, let's go through um, Shooter's World Match first. So here's our starting uh, uh, length, 2.235, about an inch group, uh, five thousandths longer. Look, it's Complete shift in the point to impact. Still about an inch group. There's verticality there. A little bit of diagonalness, which that's similar in a way, uh, going the other direction, but whatever. Anyway, uh, five thousandths longer. It moves to the lower right, uh, kind of closer to the actual center of the target. And then here, it's actually very similar, although it does shift a little bit. Um, it does shift a little bit to the lower left, but only a little bit because by virtue of like <laughs> a couple shots. So I wonder if we work in between these two or a little bit further, if we find our harmonic node for seating depth, because that's what we're doing. We have to find our harmonic node in terms of seating depth, but also in terms of powder charge. Um, that said, let's go back to the original point of just because you find a seating depth uh, that works for a powder doesn't mean it works for all powders with that bullet. Because here was Norma 203, and I think this was 2.235. Uh, and then when we moved, um, I think up again, uh, you can see there, there is a shift more to a little bit lower left, but it actually is, uh, pretty close to the same. We just have this dreaded flyer that kind of throws us off and a little bit more shots that way. This is kind of a barrel heat test, I guess we can go and say another project I'm working on. Anyway, then lastly here, you can see, I mean, it kind of goes, I mean, it's, they're largely the same points of impact and all the, all the groups are garbage. So yeah, that was, uh, oh, well, I didn't fire those shots. I definitely didn't fire those shots because you don't see the, uh, the carbon ring on them because I use that Redding dry neck, neck lube. Anyway, uh, then stable 6.5. I happen to find a perfect sine wave that, uh, the graphing, the, the harmonic wave that you're looking for because look at this and then i mean there is a slight shift to the point of impact but it goes to a double group still about an inch and then it tightens up to about a half inch and then it really goes like terrible uh, but it's that double grouping again but then it tightens back up then when i moved on to do my powder test my powder graduations we found one that tightened up from a half inch to a third of an inch. So this way of doing things, this um, seating depth first, it can work. But like with all things, you got to do your testing and you kind of also have to have that luck. So, yeah. But again, back to the original point. Once you find a seating depth for a powder with a certain bullet, don't think it's going to translate because I... I have the evidence otherwise. Uh, I think that we can definitely do better with the uh, Shooter's World match. I know that the rifle can do better. I know that I can do better. We'll see if the powder can do better. Norma 203, otherwise known as Reloader 15, if I remember right. Uh, not so much, at least, with uh, that powder charge weight. But, yeah. And this, this was the higher charge weight, 25.2. Uh, you can see it opened up to a nasty two inch group, which is comparable to the other barrel heat test I did. Uh, uh, maybe I'll cut that in, but at this point we're kind of babbling on and we're talking about another project. So 
Maybe I'll just take this part of the footage to include it into that video. But anyway, uh, there's a lot of information there and a lot of time because this was supposed to be a video about Shooter's World Match, but it ended up being more about seating depth testing. I'm okay with that. I do these videos so that, uh, well, so I can learn, but also so that you guys can learn with me. And I'm hoping that you guys help me learn too. Anyway, I got a couple more shots to fire off for my, another rifle, but I'll see you guys later.